Hello, so this is the Abacus tutorial for the 2017 assignment 1. So if we look in front of us I have Abacus already open but for those on computers the best way to open it is to left click in the bottom left here into the search menu and just type Abacus CAE and double click on that icon. And that, after loading, should bring you to this page. So we're going to start by creating a model database. Um, you can see on our left we have the model tree with these options down here. We then have the different modules that could be changed from this drop down menu here. And beneath the module were the module options. So to begin with, as the name of the video suggests, we're going to create a part and we're going to call it the This is going to be a 3D, uh, 3D model, deformable, and it's solid, and extrusion. So extrusion, we will create a plane and then extrude it in a certain direction. The approximate size, size just describes, the, as uh, the name suggests, the approximate size of the model. So if we just click on. So here we have our XY plane. So to begin with, we're going to start by creating a new square. As so, once you've created a square, we want a dimension, so we can use the dimension option here. Select each of these sides, and we're going to set them to 0.2. Perfect. So, once you've dimensioned both our sides, if we click Escape, we should see this Done option here. So, if we select Done, we can then go about extruding it in the Z direction. And we want to extrude it by two. So here we have our part. Our next step, if we go to the module drop down menu, is to create some properties for this part. So if we select the property module, we can subsequently create a material. So each of you has a different material, however, so use those, however, I want to use my own material. I'll call this my material. We're going to supply by material some properties, so we can start by density. I'll use density certainly. And secondly, we can apply some mechanical properties, uh, and some elastic mechanical properties. These would be again, just a reminder: use the properties that you or your group have been assigned. So we can click OK. So now we've created a material. Our next step, again, if we go to the Prop Module Manager, is to select Assembly. So we want to assemble our part. We can do this by creating an instance. We create this instance, and uh, we can create an instance from a part that we've just made. Uh, this part was called Beam, so I'll select Beam. And the instance, we want to mesh on the part, so we can leave this dependent. Okay. So now we've created an instance of our part. Uh, we next want to create a section. So if we go to our model tree on the left, we can double click on section and create a section. This we will just call my section. And this is a solid with homogeneous properties. Continue. This section needs to be assigned a material. We've given we've only made one material, we can just assign it by material. So now we have a section. Once we've created our instance of our part and created a section, we want to assign assign our section to our part so we can open up the part tree followed into our part that we generated B and double click the section assignments. If you notice down here the prompt says select the regions to be assigned a section. So we can just select our part and it should highlight the entire beam. This section, called bisection, is region set one, which is the region we just selected. So we can click OK. So now we've assigned our section to our part. Our next step is to create a step. So we can create a step by going to the step module and create a step module. You see, we already have an initial step. 
so we'll say called initial. So we just want to create a subsequent step step called loading. This is going to be a general static. So you can provide this step with an instruction description. So we'll call this a loading step. Uh, there are other options that we don't need to worry about with this tutorial. Okay. So we've created a step. The text part or the next module in the list is interaction. We do not have any interactions in this project, so we can skip this and go straight to load. So now we have load. So we have our part, we need to assign it some boundary conditions. These boundary conditions are as follows. We want to fix one end, so we can create a boundary condition. We can call this boundary condition fixed end. The fixed end will be fixed for our entire uh, simulation, so we can set this at the initial step. And you can see we have different boundary conditions available. We will just stick to one cast job. So we need to select the region with which we're going to apply this boundary condition. So if we select the most negative Z uh, end, uh, we select the set and it's highlighted, and then we select done. And we can see that different options are available for different uh, boundary conditions. We have X symmetry, Y symmetry. We, however, will just select pinned or turn to the uncast. So now we've pinned our one end, fixed one end. The other boundary condition that we have, or initial condition that we have on this beam, is a loading step. So we can apply load at the other end. So if we rotate our model, ah, lost it. There we go. We can apply load to our other end. So we can just call this load. We're going to apply this on the loading step that we created earlier. There are a number of different uh, types of loads you can apply, but we'll just apply a surface traction. So now we need to apply the surface traction to a specific surface. Again, we see the prompt below. We can select our surface here. Select loop. This load is edited. Uh, uh, as follows, so most of the options we can leave as they are. To it's, the things we definitely need to do is we need to apply a direction vector. So we can apply a direction vector through this following step here. If we double click this cursor, we can see we have uh, a first point for a direction vector. So we can select the top top point of our surface that we have highlighted. And the second point would be directly below that to give us a direction vector of 0, minus 1, 0. This means that the force or load is going to be applied in a negative y direction. And the second thing we need to do is apply a magnitude. So for me, this magnitude will be. Um, and we can select OK. So now we have our fixed end and our loading uh, on the other end. I can, we can move on to the next module, which is meshing. So to mesh the part, to mesh the part, we have a number of options. We have we can seed the part with the following two options. We have uh, our seed instance the left here, which seeds the entire part globally, or we can seed individual edges. These seeds make up the nodal points for the mesh. So I will seed uh, the global part. So if you see this error, we decided we want to mesh on the part. So we can dismiss this. And we see our object up here. We can double click on beam to the left here. We'll select part. Again, we move back to the seed part. So I'm just going to seed it globally with an approximate global size of 0.1. Apply. You can see our seeds are set. And it's a set globally on every edge. Okay. The next step would be to assign some mesh controls, or we can do it two ways. We can start by meshing it initially, 
So if we mesh the part, we can press OK. So we now have our mesh. We may then want to change this mesh. So, uh, so for some in the tutorial, they may have a tetrahedral element. For some, they may have hexahedral elements. And you may want to play around with the order. So we can assign some certain mesh controls. So if we select this option, we can see that we can select select whether we're using a hex or a tetrahedral. So if we select, uh, <coughs> select tetrahedral, press OK. We will need to delete the mesh that we just generated. So we can delete that mesh and remesh, hopefully, as a tetrahedral mesh. So we can leave this for now. And secondly, to change some more uh, the order of the elements, we can go to assign element type to our left here. So if we click on the assign element type, again the prompt says select the region to be assigned element types. So we can select the entire part. Done. And we can see we have a number of options here. So the main option that you may want to change is the geometric order. The linear is the uh, Four noded linear tetrahedron, quadratic is the 10 noded tetrahedron. These elements are described uh, below here, I just highlighted uh, them. There are all other options that uh, you may want to read about and play around with if you have time, but for now, the GMH order is, is fine. We'll leave it as linear for the time being. So we have linear tetrahedrons. So we created our mesh, and now finally we're almost ready to run. So we just want to create a job. So again, just we select the job module and create job. We can call this my job. Create a job. You can provide us a description if required. We can just leave it. Okay. So now the easiest way to do this is to scroll down into our module, or sorry, model tree. And we see we have jobs, we've created a job. If we open this up, we can right click and submit the job. So if it's open right. So we've submitted a job and we can see in our terminal beneath we have instructions as to what's going on. So we do the job my job has been created, the job input file my job has been submitted. So the analysis has been completed. And we see that job my job is completed successfully. Once it's completed, we can right click again and click on the results. So here we have the results. Uh, I explore you to uh, play around with these options, but some of the simple ones are to plot contours. You see, we select the contour option for a disformed shape, and we can see it's plotting the one these stresses. We can change what it's plotting with these menus up here. So we would like to plot the displacement U. And if we want to look at the X, we can look at U1. If we want to look at the Y, U2, and Z, U3. As follows. Um, at this point, it would be useful to explore how to export results from OpenFOAM, how to explore uh, pictures and images for your report. I'll leave you to do that yourselves. This concludes the assignment, or the video part of the assignment. I wish you all the best.